Welcome to the BioBalanced HealthCast, episode number 456, Obesity and Early Onset Colorectal Cancer. BioBalanced Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalanced Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Women under 50 who have a higher risk of getting colorectal cancer because of their family history or because they've had uh, bowel disease throughout their life, autoimmune bowel disease, celiac disease, other diseases that irritate the bowel. Uh, So those are risk factors. And these women, if they are under a BMI of 24.9, are not in a higher risk because of their weight. Uh That actually saves them from many of them from getting colorectal cancer. But if their BMI is above 24.9, then they are at higher risk. So they call that, that's really not obesity, that's just overweight. Mm -hmm. From 25 up to 30 is overweight, and 30 above above 30 is obesity. So if you're classified as obese, then your risk goes up? Yes, your risk goes up, and it's um, actually double. Twice as high. Twice as high. Yeah. As normal, thinner people. So I I always talk to people about their weight. And there are many articles that come out saying, well, people who are overweight are, can be still healthy. Well, they, their heart may be healthy right now, but they may be collecting fat on their blood vessels because obesity causes inflammation and inflammation causes heart disease, stroke, and death. So in the way that they say today, you're healthy because you're not having a heart attack, and but you're obese. You're not everyone now. Not right now, yeah. but you're still at high risk later for a heart attack, higher than somebody who's not obese. So obesity just causes so much exposure to other problems. Right, heart disease, breast cancer. I mean, the biggest Inflammation. risk. Everybody goes, oh, I don't want to take estrogen because it causes breast cancer. It doesn't. But obesity does, right. and if you can if you can become non-obese and get your BMI down or get your weight down, you can yourself on your own decrease your risk of breast cancer. So they did a study that covered eighty five thousand plus two hundred fifty six women mm-hmm. between the ages of eighteen and forty four uh, between the ages of twenty five and forty four, mm-hmm. and what they found is that in that group of eighty five thousand women, mm-hmm. those who had BMIs of thirty or above had twice as many risk factors for colorectal cancer Mm -hmm. as the ones that had BMIs under Mm 24.5. And that's an astonishing piece of information. What that tells us is if you want to avoid, you may not, if you're obese now, as as Kathy was saying, if you're obese now, you may say, well, I'm really healthy. I don't have anything going on. I'm just Mm -hmm. big. Uh, You don't know what's going on inside. You don't know what the lead time for these things Mm -hmm. are. But what we're telling you is the risk factor to have these awful things happen down the road are pretty significant. And if you can do something about the obesity, if you can find a way to manage your weight, control it and get your BMI down, whatever way. And and there are ways that we want to talk about, the the Mm -hmm. programs that that exist, because there are all kinds of things that make people overweight, whether it's emotional trauma and they Mm -hmm. eat for for comfort Mm -hmm. or whether it's some physiological complexity in their system, diet and nutrition, genetics. Genetics, the always, the always hungry person or the never yes. full person. Those are genetic traits that you have to fight or the obesity gene, which I have, but I'm clearly not obese. Right. So I have that, but I've been fighting it my whole life in how I eat, how I exercise. That's my gene, but you, you, that doesn't mean you have to be obese if you have it. Well, And if you're obese, you're more likely to be diabetic. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can be diabetic and not be obese. Almost every illness that oh, we... Is- compounded to fight yes. is pre- predicated by obesity. Yeah. And if you can lose weight and and that's the key, if you can concentrate on denying yourself the pleasure of eating donuts or eating 
uh, the whole pie or eating, you know, or well, chiseling down 20, and, and 20 you know, it's, cookies. It's even more complex than that it because it's not just eating that. obvious sugars because corn syrup is, is in, in so everything. much of our diet, mm -hmm. thanks to the government. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we don't even know that we're corn. consuming that many sugars and that mm -hmm. many carbs unless you really start to look at what are you eating and what's in it. And well, ever, ever since we've had a, a grandbaby, my daughter's a label reader. And, yeah. you know, my daughter's my partner. She's a physician. So she's a family physician. And she looks at every label. She yeah. makes sure there is no carrageen. Carrageen is a thickener, but it's a cancer. It's a... Um, Pre-cancer food. You don't want to have carrageen in anything. Yeah. So she looks at this and she's like, carrageen, soy. She's looking at all the chemicals and she's like, nope, nope. We're not feeding that to her. We're not eating that. Right. You know, so now that's the kind of thing you have to look at if you don't want to be obese. Fresh foods. Fresh foods. Yeah, fresh not, foods. Not processed foods with, or a, with a shelf food. life of 20 months. Yeah, fresh yeah. food or frozen food. Right. Is basically the same thing. They mm -hmm. have the same enzymes, basically, as long as you don't cook it to death when you defrost it. So basically, you should steam things. You shouldn't just boil vegetables away because all the vitamins are in the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, sh you should eat fresh fruit as fruit, not juice. Juice is too packed with sugars that right. increase your risk of diabetes and gaining weight. So sh fruit is not your friend if you're going to put so ten fruits in a blender. So at Biobalance Health, yes, do you have a, a diet program that helps people find these things out and and sets them on a path that they should follow to improve their chances of not being obese? Yes, that's amazing. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do because we know what the risk is. Even if you don't have these diseases now, or we don't well, want our patients to have these. Doctor Sullivan is there. Yes, and Doctor Sullivan is there. And and she'll read the labels and say, "You can't, you can't eat <laughs> you that can't crap." Eat that. Yeah, yeah, and right. and she tells everybody why they can't eat yeah. it. But it's not about. It really isn't about denial. It's about finding the things you should eat. So we look at your blood type to make to see blood type goes along with certain foods that slow down your metabolism and other foods that speed it up. So we advise according to your genetics and your blood type these foods you should eat, these foods you shouldn't. Just because they're not good for your genetics, not everybody's. And then studies have shown that people don't go on diets and have success. They have to have lifestyle changes. It's not about diets. It's about eating the rest of your life a certain way. Exactly. And to make that transition, most people benefit better. They make the transition more readily if they have a support system mm -hmm. and they have a program and a plan. Right. And your office provides those and we, things. And we do. And we did that. And your, your wife was the best person. <laughs> My she's wife's a, a fanatic. She's a wonderful cook, too. Yeah. So she can make anything taste good. So <laughs> and so she, so she, we discussed this. We needed, Brett needed to lose 30 pounds. So we went through the diet. We went through exercise. And he did it. And she did it. And she supported him in doing it. Because there's a lot of psychological problems with losing weight. When you lose weight, sometimes your spouse goes, uh-oh, she's really cute now, and now i got to worry about all the guys, you know, the guys in the neighborhood, whatever. They they then bring you home chocolates and bring you home stuff that's going to make you gain weight. They don't even know they're doing that, yeah. but that's part of their response to, oh, my gosh, now I have to, I'm jealous, hmm. you know, because that because a woman looks amazing. So I've had patients tell me stuff like that for years. Yeah. So we, we know that that can happen we discuss that with our patients. Then we also have, we're not really about calories. We're about eating carbs and not eating carbs and then and then not eating certain like fat that's on meat, not eating animal fat because animal fat contains all the toxins in our environment. And so that's where we store toxins. That's where animals store them. So we have people cut the fat off. But more than that, we have medications that deal with the problem that the patient has in terms of their metabolism. So there's one that's been around forever, and it's really, really cheap. And yes. it's called metformin or yes. glucophage. Yes. And people have known about it. So why, why aren't more people taking it? It really is a great drug. People have heard from their grandma that that gave them diarrhea. Yes. And that's the major side effect, but it's only a side effect if you eat too many carbs and so if and, you take the medicine but still don't change your consumption, right? Then you'll have diarrhea. Then you'll have issues. So All it right. punishes you for being bad. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> but, that's what you and need. But we tell no. Yeah. But we tell people if you don't eat, don't eat these things that have all the carbs right. in them while you're taking metformin. Yeah. 
but you should be taking extended release metformin so it works all day. You're not a diabetic. If you're not a diabetic, you have to use extended release. It's not helpful to use the short acting if you're not and, and so it's not over the counter you need a prescription you need a so prescription. You, you need the support of a doctor that's saying okay i know what you're doing here this will help you right and you need a doctor who knows diet not dieting but weight loss yes so that's that's one drug we have other drugs that attack the same kind of thing which is insulin resistance because after you get to a certain size you become resistant to insulin and you gain fat because of that so we try to uh, combat that with metformin first, and if that isn't adequate or you hit a wall, we go up to Victoza, and there are some other um, there are some other uh, medications that we go up to not very often that we have to use that are injections, mm -hmm. but they work, and they, you don't take them forever. None of these are forever unless. So these are sub Q. They're these little little tiny little needles. Little tiny needles that you do in your stomach until you get to your ideal weight, right. and then you can stop it. So everybody goes, I'm not doing that the rest of my life. So they never even try. So is it, is it get to your ideal weight or get to your ideal weight and still have your blood sugars in the right places? I mean, you but, still yeah, have to do you, blood we tests. Have to, yeah, I'm assuming, I'm talking about people who don't really have a blood sugar problem. Okay. That aren't diabetics at this point. If you are diabetic, then this helps you. If you're type 2 diabetic because you've gained weight, then right. this helps you. Back that off back and not have to up. take insulin ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, someday... You know, people who just keep gaining weight because of insulin resistance and don't do anything about it with diet or medication end up sometimes having to use insulin. So so almost That's, everybody has heard about obesity and diabetes. Yes. And that if you are obese, you increase your certainty of becoming diabetic. Mm -hmm. And that's going to find a way to kill you at some point. Yeah, heart disease is, increases doubles. But, I mean, it's, but what we start talking about today is if you're obese, you can also get colorectal cancer. Yes. And that will also kill you. And that's usually an early, they're, they're looking at in this study that was done at WashU, which is in town in St. Louis with us. Right. So this, this study was young women developing colon cancer. Right. So even before we start evaluating people, we usually do a colonoscopy at 45 uh, and then at 50. And then after that, it depends on what they find at those colonoscopies. But we don't do them earlier, but obese women are getting colon cancer earlier than that. <coughs> and so that's, that's a big worry. And the fact is, is that the, their only really real risk factor is the obesity. Yes. And this, in this study, that's the only risk factor they had between the two groups was obesity versus non-obese. It wasn't, and everything else was even. So if you are obese for whatever reason, it's as if you put a tattoo on your forehead that said diabetes and colon cancer because you dramatically increase your risk of both things happening. And what we, we didn't talk about is you can't be on a diet and sit there and do nothing and not exercise. That is, that's just not possible. I mean, you can't sit and watch TV all day and, ex and eat very little and expect to lose weight. You have to move. We were meant to be people outside doing things, working with our hands and bodies. We weren't meant to sit at a desk or in a chair. So that's not a natural thing for us. We need to get out and do things. And once you do, you make that first step, it becomes part of your life. So it's about a de deliberate, healthy lifestyle change. Right. You, you, know, you have to have a reasonable amount of exercise and movement. You have to eat healthy foods, mm -hmm. not processed foods, not frozen foods. Not, no, I mean, frozen, the but issue not of manufacturing food. all that stuff is, mm -hmm. is shelf life. And we mm -hmm. make it in advance. We put it out there. You save it for years. You know, like we used to stock our bomb shelters with, you know, lots of that right, stuff. Yeah. We haven't done so that so much. So the, the food industry has figured out how to preserve it forever. And they put a bunch of chemicals and Then you in. put it in your body. You take all that stuff in your body. So, so those are the basics, but getting some help with medications. And there's me there are many other medications. There are diet pills that stimulate your metabolism and decrease your appetite. There are other kinds of medications that are combinations of medicines that help you with appetite and stimulating your metabolism. But to they lose require weight. prescriptions. They, they need yeah. supervision and a program right. of, of they don't both work alone. eating healthy and exercise. The other thing that they, if you are obese and over 50, if you're female and you've hit menopause, then you get more insulin resistant with just the loss of your estrogen and progesterone. So you need to have your hormones replaced in a non-oral fashion to help you lose weight. Otherwise, it's just, it's just like 
pushing a rock up the hill and it comes right back down. So, so, it's you, so you can't take your hormones orally and you get the benefit you're talking no, about. You have you to get them take a, a different non-orally. way. Take it non-orally. So it could be a patch. It could be a, a vaginal ring. It could be pellets, which is what we do. Right. So, uh, and if you add testosterone, that improves your muscle mass, which is where you burn calories. Yeah. So that helps prevent cancer. <laughs> so what we're talking about today is not about fat shaming. We don't believe in that. We think that's a horrible thing in its own right. What we're saying is that if you are larger and your body mass index is 30 or above, you're significantly at risk for an early and painful death. There are things that you can do about it and should do about it. So hopefully you'll get in touch with BioBalance Health or your own physician to say, I've heard about this. I have this problem. Can you help me? I want to be well. That's right. I want, I want to have a quality life and I want to be well. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy my family for as long, long as I can. Yeah. And that's what you need to ask for because in general, most doctors, I was trained to fix, fix disease. So you need to tell them what you want. Yeah. Because you don't have the disease yet. <laughs> yeah. But you you're yeah. on the track. Right. So, so it will, it will be well worth your while to put the time and effort in to getting yourself to a normal body size and body weight. Yeah. And, we know that you'll be healthier and you'll with be happy that, that you change. Did. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.